Shall we rise up? Let's close our eyes in prayer. There's nothing God can't do. With God all things are possible. Our Father, we bless your name. We know that you are a great God. You are proving that with you, all things are simple. You can heal the sick. You can remove pains. And Father, we are trusting you tonight that you will magnify yourself in Jesus' name. We pray that in a simple way, we will receive our miracles tonight in Jesus' name. Lead us to the fountain of living waters. We pray that the thirst and the hunger we have will be satisfied by you. Glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree, a pharaoh, having leaves, he came. If haply, if perhaps he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Verse 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Tonight I want to speak to you on the real faith. Faith is very important in the word of God. And whenever we pray, if we do not have faith in God, the prayer will not be answered. The strength of our prayer, as you have heard me mention before, is our faith. The foundation of your prayer must be faith. What makes your prayer efficacious or answered is the faith behind the prayer. And tonight as I talk on the real faith, I want you to understand that whenever we come in here and we pray, if we are praying with the real faith, God always answers. When there is real faith, the answer is sure. And here, when the disciple, Peter, called to remembrance that what Jesus said the previous day had been fulfilled, Jesus only said, have faith in God. Or as in the margin in the original, have the faith of God. What does real faith look like? How does real faith work? Who can manifest real faith? Let's go back to verse 12. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree, a parrot, having leaves, he came. If I play, he might find anything thereon. And he came to it. He found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Now let me remind you, that Jesus Christ did not need the fruit on the tree. He was hungry. But then you know that Jesus Christ as a son of God, as a mighty God, as a creator, if he wanted, he could command stones to become bread because nothing was impossible for him. If he wanted, he could ask for the little uh, loaves of bread or fish with the disciples, and he could multiply age. If he wanted, he could send to the riverside 
and he could have money at the riverside when a fish should be caught and then with the money he could, he could buy bread. But then he wanted to teach the disciples about the real faith. Anything Jesus did, he did it for a particular purpose. And I want you to understand that Jesus was not angry. Because anger and faith cannot work together. Anger and love cannot work together. Anger and the power of God cannot work together. So Jesus wasn't angry. Jesus wanted to manifest the God kind of faith so that his disciples will see and he will use it as an object lesson for his own disciples. When there was no fruit on the feet, on the fig tree, he wanted to speak the word, the word of faith, the word of command. And the disciples were watching in verse 14. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. After he said that, he passed on his way. He went on. To show us that the prayer may be short, if there is faith in it, it will be answered. To show us that we may not have been singing choruses and we, must, we may not have been jumping up and jumping up before the prayer, if there is faith in it, it will be answered. To show us that the prayer may not be offered by thousands of people, it may be offered by just one person. If there is faith in it, God will answer. At this time you understand that Jesus Christ was not in a religious uh, emotion. He wasn't shouting. He wasn't running up and down. He wasn't wearing a, a type of prayer garment. Because when you are a man of God and you know how to pray, it doesn't matter the time of the day. It doesn't matter how many people are joining you in the prayer. If you are praying with faith, the real faith, the Lord is always answering. And Jesus Christ uttered the word of authority. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Verse 20. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the, from the roots. They were watching. They wanted to see what had happened. But Jesus Christ himself was not watching because he knew that once he had spoken the word, the answer had been given already. And this is a great lesson to teach us that when you have sickness, it is represented by the fruitless, profitless uh, uh, fig tree. And the man of God speaks against it. Now the man of God will not be watching to see whether it has been done or not. The man of God knows it has been done. It is you that will watch. And when you watch, you wake up the second day, you'll find that fig tree has totally dried up. The cancer has dried up. The fever has dried up. The tumor has died up. The um, appendicitis has dried up. Everything that you brought into the meeting, once the man of God spoke, it is taken away because the man of God has uttered the word in the real faith, the God kind of faith. As they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, says unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. He was surprised. But you know, Jesus was not surprised. Because Jesus knew that was a normal thing. Whenever he spoke the word, the word has to be effective. The tree has to be dried up. If you are sick here tonight and the word of God is spoken and prayer is prayed for you, that sickness has to go. It has no choice. If there is any problem in your life and the man of God will speak against your problem, that problem has to dry up from the roots. And then the wind will come and the wind will blow on that dry tree and it will fall down completely in Jesus' name. And so Jesus said in verse 22, 
Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. Meaning that if you have faith in God, when you are prayed for, it will be answered by God immediately. And by the second day, you'll see the result in your life. Now, I want you to pay attention. I've shown you this example of Jesus speaking to the fig tree. And I've shown you that all Jesus needed to do was to speak the word. Speak the word. And it will be, it was done. The question is, was it only Jesus Christ that could manifest a faith like that? You must listen very well now because this is a real secret. You know, Jesus Christ was the Son of God and still the Son of God. And as the Son of God, He spoke the word every time He spoke. It was done. It may be against a fever. It may be against barrenness. It may, it may be against even the spirit of death or against any form of sickness. He spoke it in a sentence. It was done. It may be paralysis or blindness. It may be a hand that was withered. This is the way he always spoke. The word of authority. And talking about, talking about the fig tree was only an example, an illustration of how he dealt with every form of problem. Let me show you one example. In Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Verses 33 to 35. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him saying, Listen to this. Hold thy peace and come out of him. Just a sentence. If it was a fig tree, a sentence would bring that fig tree down. It, if it was a devil, evil spirit, demonic attack or oppression, a single sentence would bring that devil out. Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. So you can see that the story of the fig tree, just an illustration. That is the way Jesus always dealt with a problem. Because he was the son of God. Look at verse 41. Verse 41. And the devils also came out of many, crying out, saying, Thou art Christ, the son of God. The Son of God. And he rebuking them suffered them not to speak. For they knew that he was Christ. Now the question I'm asking you is this. Knowing that Jesus was the Son of God. He spoke just in a sentence. And with that single sentence the work was done. Was it only as the Son of God he could do it. Can any other person do it? As other pe have other people done it in the past? Listen to me. As you check up in your Bible, you will see the similarity in which the Son of God, the man of God, the servant of God, the prophet of God prayed. You study your Bible very well. I, I've, I've just shown you how the Son of God prayed. In a single sentence, he caused the fig tree, and the, and the tree withered. We're told that when, they, when Simon Peter's mother was sick of fever, he just stood over there and he rebuked that fever. It came out. That's the prayer of the Son of God. I've shown you a man having unclean spirit. The Son of God said, come out of him. It came out just in a single sentence. You remember when Jesus was on the stormy sea and the disciples said, Master, Master, carest thou not that we perish? The Son of God rose up and he said, Peace be still. And there was calmness. That's the way the Son of God always prayed. But now, compare that prayer with the man of God praying. Or is the servant of God praying? Or the prophet of God praying? You'll find something exactly the same way. Let me show you one example of the man of God praying. The man of God praying. In First Kings chapter 17. 
First Kings chapter 17 verse 1 And Elijah the Tishbite who was of the inhabitants of Gilead said unto Ahab As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand there shall not be dew nor rain these years according to my word full stop did you see that Elijah he came to the king of the whole nation and as he came to him he said according to my word there shall not be dew nor rain all these years and he stopped and went away that was all that is the prayer of the man of God now to show you that he was called the man of God look at verse 24 and the woman said to Elijah now by this I know that thou art a man of God and that the word of the Lord is in thy mouth in truth when the man of God appeared whatever the problem was if he's still the man of God listen to me there is an anointing on the man of God that is different from the anointing on a child of God when you are just a saved soul there is an anointing on you but when you are a servant of God there is a greater deeper richer anointing upon you and when you pray with the anointing of the man of God it's a totally different thing because you are praying with the, son, with the faith of the Son of God in a single sentence the work is done the diseases depart the devil is cast out in a single sentence all the fever will depart in a single sentence the barren will have children because when the man of God is praying he is praying with a different anointing with a different faith that is the way Jesus Christ the Son of God prayed he came in the public he spoke the word and it was done and you realize that as Elijah, Elijah the man of God came out and he prayed it was always always the prayer that was totally different he spoke the word and it was done and you when you have the anointing of the man of God you'll find that your prayer life is different you'll find the authority of your prayer is different you'll find that you'll be praying with the real faith whether you are casting out devil or you are praying for any other thing now i want you to see this in this same chapter first kings chapter 17 i'm looking at it from verse 14 look at verse 12 and she said as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. But look at verse 13. Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. But make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. That was all. He proclaimed it. Provision on the, on the poor. He proclaimed the pro prosperity for the one that was suffering poverty. He proclaimed it. He said, the cruise of oil will not fail. The barrel of meal will not fail. In verse 15, And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail. According to the word of the Lord, which is spake by Elijah, the man of God. As the man of God spoke the word, it was fulfilled. Now I've shown you something. The son of God prayed with a special faith, with, with a real faith. But the man of God always prayed like that as, as well. When the man of God prays like that, the word is established. Let me show you something. Suppose somebody is called servant of God. 
I don't mean somebody calling himself servant of God. Suppose God himself has ordained, has chosen a man, and he has called him a servant of God. How does he pray? Second Chronicles chapter 24. Second Chronicles chapter 24 verse 9. And they made a proclamation through Judah and um, Jerusalem to bring in to the Lord the collection that Moses, the servant of God, the servant of God, laid upon Israel in the wilderness. Now here we find a man called the servant of God. I've shown you Jesus, the son of God. I've shown you Elijah, the man of God. I've now shown you Moses, the servant of God. How did he pray whenever he prayed? If you have checked up in your Bible very well, you will see the authority of the prayer of the servant of God. Let me show you one example. In Exodus chapter 8, Exodus chapter 8. From verse 8. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me, when shall I entreat for thee and uh, for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs? from thee and thy houses that they may remain in the river only. Now frogs covered the whole land of Egypt. It came into their houses, it came into their rooms, it came into their kitchen, it came into the roads, it came everywhere. And Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, called on Moses and Aaron and said, Now please, you call upon God, beg the Lord for me, plead for me, and that the frogs may leave, and that the frogs may go back to the river and remain in the rivers alone. And Moses said, When do you want that miracle? Today, tomorrow, next week, any time? Verse 10. And he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Be it according to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. And the frog shall depart. This is a man of God already now. He's proclaiming the word. Already now, as the servant of God, is proclaiming that this is what will happen. A miracle is on the way. And the frog shall depart from thee, and from thy houses, and from thy servants, and from thy people. And he shall remain in the river only. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh. And Moses cried unto the Lord because of the frogs at which he had brought against Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. And the frogs died out of the houses and of the villages and of the fields. I told you when the Son of God prays, it's authoritative. I've shown you when the man of God prays, it's authoritative. I've told you when the servant of God prays, it's authoritative. Let me show you. When the prophet of the Lord, the prophet of God, when he prays. In a single sentence, with the word of authority, the work is done. I'm showing you the Bible. And when the Holy Ghost writes the word of God upon your heart, and you really understand what I'm sharing with you, you will know that what I am telling you um, will work for your good tonight in the name of Jesus. Look at 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 3. I'm reading verses 19 and 20. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did not, did let none of his words fall to the ground. Now, look up here. A person does not become a man of God the moment he is born again. A person does not become servant of God the moment he is born again. A person does not become the prophet of God the moment he is born again. First of all, when you are born again, you are a child of God. Then you begin to draw near unto the Lord. Uh, <coughs> as you draw near unto the Lord, you make your consecrations, you, you yield yourself to the Lord, you get sanctified. He takes the Adamic nature away from you. Listen to me. 
with the Adamic nature in the heart, with the principle of sin, the root of sin in the heart, God cannot, God cannot fashion you and make you into a man of God, a servant of God, a prophet of God. God will need to do that deeper work of grace in your heart because he wants to use you. You remember I was telling you just last Monday, the man behind church growth. And I told you that man must, first of all, is born again. He's a child of God. Then I told you he's a man of secret prayer. I told you he's a man of searching purity. I told you he's a man of supernatural power. I told you he's a man that is of strong conviction. You know, you do not become a man of God, a servant of God, a prophet of God. Just the day, the moment you are born again, you begin to seek the face of the Lord. And you draw near to the Lord. You bring your gift to the altar. You bind your sacrifice on the altar. You say, oh God, here am I. I want to be used of God. I want to be useful to this generation. I want to help people. I want to pray for people. I want to preach to people. And as you're making your consecrations, you are really praying. You are a man of secret prayer. And then the Lord begins to purify your life, purify your heart, and you become a man of searching purity. In secret and in public, you are living a righteous life. All the time, you are a minister in the pul you want to be a minister in the pulpit, and a minister also in the public, everywhere. And therefore, you want to live a life that is very, very consistent. After you are sanctified, you are seeking the Lord, O oh Lord, baptize me in the Holy Ghost, because ye shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be my, uh, ye, ye shall be my witnesses. And then you become a man of supernatural power. Then you have strong, pers uh, strong persuasion because you see when you are going to be used of God God doesn't want people that are not stable and steadfast God does not want people that will believe this tomorrow and believe that another day God does not want people that when they are discouraged or when there is a problem they will not be standing upon the word of God anymore that's why you will be a man of strong persuasion I told you you will be a man of scriptural preaching because if God is going to change you from a child of God to a man of God, you must study the Bible. You study the Bible. You study the Bible. Like Jeremiah, you come before the Lord and you eat the word of the Lord. You drink the word of the Lord. Every time this word of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, you'll meditate there in day and night that you may prosper and that everything you do, it will be, it will be sanctioned by God. And therefore you become a man of scriptural preaching. You are eating that word, you are drinking in that word, you are studying that word, you study to show yourself approved unto God, a man that needeth not to be ashamed. I told you then that uh, to be a man of God is not just something automatic. To be a servant of God is not something automatic or to be a prophet of God. But when eventually you have yielded yourself to the Lord and you are totally giving yourself to the Lord and uh, you are following the Lord and you have spiritual perception because I told you it's not only secret prayer it's not only uh, searching purity it's not only supernatural power it's not only um, strong persuasion it's not only scriptural preaching you must also be a person that has spiritual perception spiritual perception because you are able to tell where the Lord wants you to be. What is the will of the Lord? You are able to tell what the Lord wants you to do at any time. Then you have sound principles. A man of sound principles. You cannot be spoiled by money. You cannot be spoiled by women. You cannot be spoiled by immorality. You are yielding yourself completely unto the Lord. And when you are a man of sound principles, you see, if all these things are in your life, the Lord will see that you really mean business. And you are waiting upon the Lord. You will progress from being a child of God to being a man of God, a servant of God, a prophet of the Lord. And so you see Samuel. We're told in verse 19, and Samuel grew. And the Lord was with him. He was making progress. He was making progress. This man was becoming a man of secret prayer. He was becoming a, a man of searching purity. He was becoming a man of spiritual perception. He was becoming a man of strong persuasion. He was becoming a man of sound principles. Because you see, Ophni and Phinehas, they were rotten. They were bad. They were immoral. Uh, but you know, he will not follow after them. He will continue in the ways of the Lord. And the Lord said, Samuel, Samuel. He did not know the Lord was calling him. He did not know a change was taking place already from a child of God to a man of God. From a child of God to a servant of God. From a child of God to a prophet of God. And he went to Eli. And Eli said, I'm not calling you. 
and he went to Eli again when he had it second time and Eli said I'm not calling you and then he went to the Lord he went to uh, Eli again Eli realized that there is a change taking place God is changing the status of this young man from a child of God to a servant of the Lord and he said if you hear that voice again you say speak lord for thy servant you see that for thy servant hear it he was now becoming not a child of god anymore now ordinarily but was becoming a servant of the lord thy servant hear him and we're told in verse 19 and samuel grew and the lord was with him and did did let none of his words fall to the ground what does that mean whenever he spoke the word the word will never fall to the ground if it is a word for healing, the person was healed. If it's a word uh, of prophecy, the prophecy was fulfilled. In verse 20, And all Israel, from Dan even unto Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. A prophet of the Lord. They knew he was established. They knew he was not just a temple worker, a tabernacle worker. They knew now that the word of the Lord was established in his mouth. Let me show you how he prayed in First Samuel. First Samuel, chapter twelve. I've shown you how the Son of God will pray, how the man of God will pray, how the servant of God will pray. Let me show you how the prophet of God will pray in First Samuel, chapter twelve. I'm reading from verse 16. Now therefore stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. Is not, is it not wheat harvest today? I will call unto the Lord and he shall send thunder and rain that ye may perceive and see that your wickedness is great which ye have done in the sight of the Lord in asking you a king. So Samuel called on the Lord and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day and all the people greatly feared the lord and samuel and all the people said unto samuel pray for thy servants the, on, uh, pray for thy servants unto the lord thy god that we die not for we have added unto all our sins this day to ask us a king now the point i want to show you here is this he told them now you are all israelites is it not the time of the harvest today and you do not expect a thunder will come or rain will come. But I will show you this. I will tell the Lord and he's going to send the thunder and the rain. And he prayed. He just, call, he just called on the Lord. And that very minute, that very minute, that very minute, the thunder and the rain came. I've shown you something tonight. When the man of God prays, God confirms it. When the servant of God prays, God confirms it. When the prophet of God prays, God confirms it. It's similar to the Son of God praying. It's similar to Jesus Christ praying. He came around and he saw the fig tree having leaves without any fruit. And he spoke the word. And the second day when they were passing by, they saw that the fig tree had dried up. And Peter called to remembrance and said, Master, Lord Jesus, Look at the fig tree you caused yesterday. It's dried up from the roots. And Jesus said, does that surprise you? You have faith in God. When you become man of God, that will happen. When you become servant of God, Peter, that will happen. When you become prophet of God, that will happen. Let me show you. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. I am reading verse 1. Paul is servant of God. Stop there. What do you mean, Paul? Servant of God? Uh, do you mean that that is different from child of God? Oh, yes. What do you mean? Do you mean that uh, a child of God may pray, pray, claiming the promises, and then for a long time the promise will be fulfilled, but for the servant of God, uh, when he speaks the word, it's fulfilled immediately? Oh yes. Paul, can you show us an example? When you, when you prayed as a servant of God, oh yes, Acts chapter 14. Let's see a servant of God praying. Acts 
chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 8. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had word. The same had Paul speak. Who steadfastly beholding him, perceiving that he had failed to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he lived and watched. You see that? That's a servant of God praying. And he saw that man that was lame. And with the authority of the face of the servant of God, he prayed and the word was fulfilled immediately. Now, what's to be your own attitude? You are here tonight. And the man of God is going to pray for you. The servant of God is going to pray for you. The prophet of God is going to pray for you. What's to be your attitude with the problem that you have? Let me show you in Second Chronicles. Old Testament passage. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 And he rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa and as they went forth Joshua stood and said Hear me O Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem believe in the Lord your God so shall ye be established believe his prophets so shall ye prosper I've already shown you how the Son of God prayed, and it was always established. Because the decree of faith was in his mouth. I've shown you how the man of God, or the servant of God, or the prophet of God will pray, and because of the decree, the authority of faith in his mouth, the word will be established. Now it's, it's coming the time to, to pray. And as we're going to pray, you know, I'm not just praying as an ordinary Christian. I'm praying because I know God has sent me to pray. God has sent me that I will minister to your problem. God has sent me that I will take your problems before the throne of grace. And when I take those problems to the throne of grace, the Lord will answer in the name of Jesus. He said, if I bind it, it is bound. He said, if I lose it, it is loose. He said, whatever I will ask on your behalf. If I ask the Father in the name of Jesus, he said he will do it. And you know that uh, uh, already you've had many, many testimonies. You've heard the barren receiving children. Almost every week now for about six or seven weeks, every Thursday, people have been coming in here that uh, I spoke the word last year and now they are bearing the children already. You have heard of the lepers being cleansed. You have heard of a woman that was uh, that couldn't walk because of a terrible withering of the legs, paralysis, or arthritis. And you've heard how we spoke the word of God, the word of command. And after the meeting, she rose up and started walking. You were here that day, just this, uh, just this year, June. And you have seen how the Lord has been working mightily. All you need to do according to this verse I've read to you. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. Believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. I'm going to pray for you. And as Jesus calls the fig tree. I'm going to speak against the devils worrying you. I'm going to speak against the powers of darkness worrying you. And they're going to go away in the name of Jesus. If you believe, you'll be established. Rise up and let us pray. I want you to talk to the Lord first. Whatever you want the Lord to do for you. Today is your day. This is your chance. Your miracle is on the way. God will give you a miracle. Because I'm going to pray for you. The anointing, the authority, the faith. The decree that God has given to me to be able to talk to the Lord and for the Lord to answer. I use it on your behalf and the Lord will answer. You'll be healed. Your sicknesses will be taken away. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. The young man that has problem in the right ear, young man, you have problem in the right ear, you raise up your hand because you can hear with your left. 
you raise up your hand and I'll be praying for you. And that right here that has been bothering you will open right now in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking for these who are raising up their hands that the problem they have in their right ears will be removed right now in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The individual that is having sensation of the pricking of the pin, the pricking of the pin on the soles of your feet, and it, it has been there for more than three weeks now. You raise up your hand, I'll be praying for you. You have the sensation in your feet as if a pin is pricking you there, and it has been on for more than three weeks. I'm praying for you, and if you raise up your hand, where are you? Have your hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, that problem in their legs, I command it be removed right now in Jesus' name. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. There's an individual in assembly now that has a high blood pressure. You went to the doctor and the doctor almost made you to faint. He became afraid because he said, you're almost a dying man. You have high blood pressure and it was so shocking to the doctor that tested you. And he it says, it's a very serious thing upon you. If you are right there, I'm praying for you right now and you're getting healed. Where are you? Terrible high blood pressure. And you were tested by the doctor and the doctor um, expressed surprise uh, very, very recently. Where are you? Raise up your hand. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm asking that these people are raising up their hands right now. You remove this high blood pressure away from them in Jesus' name. Heal them right now. Touch them with your healing touch. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name. The woman that is barren and the barrenness is breaking your home. And um, this week, your husband has not slept home more than two times. Has not become irregular at home. And the real problem that has been worrying him. And uh, every time you talk, that's what he talks about. Is that uh, you've not got a child. Now, you're here tonight. And uh, this thing is almost breaking your family. And the Lord himself, the Lord himself has seen your tears, the Lord has seen your fears, and the Lord has come to bless you. If you raise up your hand, God is answering your prayer tonight. Where are you? Raise up your hand. Father, in Jesus' name, I curse the barrenness, the root of it, the, the cause of it, I curse and destroy it in Jesus' name. Everything that is wrong in the body of these women, everything that is wrong in the body of the husband, I remove it by faith right now, by the decree of faith. I said, go away in Jesus' name. Set them totally free and give them children according to their desires in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. All heads bowed and all eyes closed. Now there is an individual having a problem with drinking. You narrowly escaped accident this year because of your drunkenness. But you are still in the power of that drunkenness. And you want to be free but you cannot be free. People have tried to do some things for you to make you free but it's impossible. And you are under the power of um, this alcohol. If you are willing to be delivered right now, I will be praying for you. All you need to do is just to raise up your hand. And uh, that devil that is uh, putting your head in the bottle, that devil is going to leave you. And you are going to be totally delivered. Amen. Amen. You almost had an accident this year because of the drunkenness. If you are there, raise up your hand and pray for you. I want all heads bowed and all eyes closed. I'm waiting for the hand. Raise it up very well. The one that almost had the accident last uh, this year, can you wave the hand at me? Okay, God bless you. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking right now that the alcoholism that is destroying the lives of these people, you remove it in Jesus' name. 
Oh Lord, I'm asking that the next time they see alcohol, it will be so smelling to them, they'll be running away from alcohol. Deliver them from the power of alcohol in Jesus' name. That other man that is there whose lungs has been affected because of smoking, oh Lord, I'm asking you, lay your mighty hand upon him and heal him right now in Jesus' name. I also pray that you take the desire for cigarettes away from that individual in Jesus' name. Thank you for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. The one that has a venereal disease, you've had it for more than five years, you raise up your hand, I'll be praying for you, and God is delivering you tonight. You have venereal disease. You've had it for more than five years. More than five years. I want to pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, You've shown us the example of Jesus, the Son of God, causing the tree, drying up. You've shown us the example of Paul, the Apostle, the servant of God, telling that lame man to rise up, and immediately it was done. You've told us the example of that servant of God, Moses, as he spoke the word. The word was fulfilled and all the frogs that were pestering the lives of the, of the Egyptians went away. You've shown us the man of God, Elijah. As he spoke the word, it was fulfilled. And you've shown us about Samuel, the prophet of the Lord. As he spoke the word, it was fulfilled. I'm now speaking the word because you have anointed me and sent me. On behalf of all these people. And I'm asking that right now, because of your mercy and your power and your grace, the venereal disease will pass away from their bodies in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you because I know you've done it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. An individual that has a problem in the head and Sometimes you are not in control and you're almost dizzy and about to fall down and there's a terrible problem in the head and you've tried to treat yourself but there's nothing you can do about it. The problem is still there. Your head will be clearing up tonight and the Lord will be healing you in a mighty way. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. I command right now that whatever is worrying these people in their heads, everything will pass away in Jesus' name. Amen. Set them totally free. Operate on those heads. Take away whatever is troubling them there. And let them be totally free in their heads and in their minds and bodies right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for the answer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, there is an individual here, this is a strange thing, you, you have a problem of uh, incessant kata, and it's, it's there all the time, that's the way I can describe it. Mokos are always coming out uh, from your nose all the time, all the time, all the time. And um, people think it's kata, but those who have known you for a long time, they know that you have always been like that for a long time. Where are you? If you raise up your hand, you are getting healed. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I'm asking that the root of that problem now will be taken away in Jesus' name. Amen. Dry it up. Amen. Clean it up. Amen. Set them totally free. Amen. Heal them this very time. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Whatever problem you have, uh, which I cannot begin to mention one by one because of our time, the one that is not able to raise his uh, hand because of a problem in the elbow, you just touch the place. And uh, the one that is having chest problem, that man that is still urinating on the bed at the age of um, you're more than 20 years of age, and you're in a responsible position in your place of work, and all the problems you have, the individual having the problem in the tummy, in the belly. And um, you may be running up and down to solve that problem. If you raise up your hand, I'll be praying for you. Whatever the problem you may have, just raise up your hand. This very moment, the Lord is taking it away. That individual that is shivering over there, the Lord says, he's touching you now. You are getting healed right now in Jesus' name. Whatever the problem, just raise up your hand and the Lord is touching you, the Lord is healing you. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I'm asking that all these people who are raising up their hands right now, you will heal and touch them in Jesus' name. Amen. All these problems that are mentioned and the ones that are not mentioned, as these people are desiring from you, and they lay their hands on the place where they have the trouble, the sickness, the infirmity, remove everything right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I'm praying for that Tamara in the large auditorium. Right now, clear up his speech in Jesus' name. Amen. Set him totally free that he'll be able to talk normally from now on in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for what you have done here tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to open your mouth and praise the Lord for what he has done for you. Believe he has done it. Believe he has done it.